Hello guys, uh, I'm in Bir for a competition and uh, uh, I'm meeting here a couple of people and one of them is uh, our Jyoti uh, Prakash uh, who is a most recognized tandem operator and a great pilot. Uh, he is from a very humble uh, small village background. He is going to share his experience, how he fell in love with paragliding and turned into a business and he is a super pilot. Let's uh, talk to him. Hi Jyoti, good morning. Very good morning. Jyoti, your humble story from a small village to a big tandem operator in Birbiling currently may inspire many youngsters. Uh, can you please share your story in detail? Okay, good morning guys. So why don't we start from the beginning, from my past, like my earliest 20 years. So I am brought and born up in mountains. The mountains are from here, they are 60 kilometers away from further north and the name of that village is Barabhanga and I'm from a shepherd family. Shepherds mean they used to be graze the sheep in the mountains from one mountain to another mountain. So what will we do? We came here for the, our primary education from that place to this place. This place is named as Birbiling. Now it's a, one of the biggest hub in the paragliding. So my story starts at like what happens for my primary education. I used to be go to the primary school where. So what happens in early 80s, I saw a person that uh, flying with a like a huge kite. And it's flying man. I said what is that, what the hell is this? So my curiosity has gone more, more and more. Okay, so one day I was just like sitting in a, my house and one guy came, I think he said, I don't know what is. So we ran over to the place. He landed somewhere in about like a 10 meters or just like, you know, 10 minutes from my place. So, okay, we went there. And we are surprised, man. One man is flying and he has a big cloth. And I don't know what the hell is this. Maybe a kite and maybe, a, you know, it can be anything. Maybe alien for us. And uh, because we started late English in my school. Sorry, I'm very bad in English. So we started my eight, English in like eight standards. So we went to that place and saw to just like talk to that person. And he was very rude. Like, you know, we touched, like to touch the glider or touch the clothes, he said, ah, go away. I don't know what the strange words even, we couldn't understand that time. Even he told some strange words. And I was really shocked at that time. And we came here to, you know, to cheer up him, okay, to show him the way. If you don't, don't know the way, let us lead him to the main village. And he was, you know, like yelling on us. Okay. Then I was between, you know, curious person and I think he is a person and I am a person we both are human being and the things he can do why not I can do this thing and I my curiosity again gone again and again more and more so then I searching the what is this thing where can I learn and how can I manage it yes then Actually, <clears throat> my mind was, you know, in the beginning is always curious. When I see the things and uh, I would like to do it. So what happens when the, uh, the man came with like a big kite and in the beginning the gliders were really very big cells and basic gliders. He was flying a very basic, that you want to No, I can say, but in that time I can't say. So what does the other people say? Yar. But the bloody people, you know, they are the real, you know, son of their mothers. They are the real heroes. Hey, you are bloody Indians, you can't do nothing, you know. You don't have to guts to do it. And it's really stuck in my mind. And why? Why can't we, can't we do? He is a human being. I am a human being. There is nothing special. If something can broke, he, he can also have pain. And I do have also pain. The thing is that there is a mental barrier. 
I say, okay, he will do it. Then it, the right first away, that thing strikes in my mind. Then I start working on the thingy, how do I get certified or how do I learn the things. What happened, my maternal grandparents are from Manali. And in that is the flying is going on early 80s through Manali. So somehow I get to know there is a person, his name is BJ, he is a good teacher and he trained a lot of people. And uh, why don't I go, go to him? Then I uh, contacted to my you know uncle in Manali. So he refers me in name of his, his name, like my guru's name, BJ. Then I contacted him and then start working on that. No. Second part comes, I've got that thing. No, second part comes, money. Where does the money, money, money come from? Mm, that stage, it was like a, looking me a impossible task. Because, uh, you know, my father and mothers, they have a very little money to, they have a house here. Even we don't have, we live on a rented house in Beer. Because what happens, we have a house in Bara Bangal, so we have to shift the families, not our family, I mean, whole families, they get shifted from that place to this place for six months. And why is that? Due to snow. There's a lot of snow up there and you can't survive in the snow. So that's why we have moved to the, this village. Now, I would say, okay, let's see in which way wind blows in that time. What happened, fortunately, I did my, just like plus one, plus two and college were in that time, they were signed together. So luckily, I was a sportsman and uh, I do the boxing in my college. First year I got a silver medal and got uh, my sponsorship for that. And uh, now my mind's, you know, again, running, running, what to do, what to do. I didn't tell my mom and she never asked because she never asked that. I say, okay, mom, uh, this is a fees of two months of my college and please, can, be, can I have the fees? And she gave me the fees and I collected it for the one year. So approximately I have uh, collected uh, 10,000 rupees in a year. So for that money I used to be started for give it to the BJ and then I start Paranadi. And it was then a huge and tremendous task of that man. The beginning in the first day of my um, that uh, ground. Because we have a uh, cows in my house. Somebody else was also learning with me. We have a group of three or four people around this area. So he said, this is not your job, you just graze sheep in the mountain or milk in the cow house. You can't do it, man. Then man, I was got mad that day I couldn't sleep in the evening. And again, I set up my mind, I will do it, I will do it. Then slowly, you know, say, small learning and with a few days I start learning. And, uh, and that's how I start learning my things. So how was your first flight experience? Man, come on, just like it still remembers me, man. When I flies first time from Billing, I couldn't open my eye for just like, you know, a couple of 20, 30 seconds. I said, what the hell I did, man? Yeah, just Pangal area, Pangal area. So, and after that, when I crossed the first stage and I opened the eyes and because on the radios, I was going on the left side, left side, they're saying, go right, go right, go right. But I was completely in, not in control for a couple of seconds because I got freeze, you know, when adrenaline level is was so high. So I got freeze, man. I said, what to do, man? But then slowly I manage it and okay, I calm myself. I pray the God, okay, please, 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 let me get down, let me get down. And then I did my first flight. Uh, when did you realize this can be business and uh, make your bread and butter out of this? This is again a long story because what happens in that time, first of all, in that continuation, I completed my more than 100, 200 hours of the solo flight. Because uh, then I named a person, he is a very renowned person in the paragliding, his name is Mr. Gurpet Jain, sir. He is the, my you know, godfather in paragliding. I worked along with him more than 10 years. So what happens in the beginning, there was no business at all. I dropped taxi for a long time because with this thing, I could not buy a paraglider. And uh, in that stage, after my uh, uh, completing my course, I don't have a glider. Now I start thinking, so why don't you do something else, that business that can bring some money and you can meet some people. 
then they help you for this thing. Then taxi service was the one of the best in that day, because there a lot of people comes from like you know Delhi and uh, other places. A lot of uh, competition was going on in early eighties, so I thought it might be. Uh, so my, I asked my mom, "Can I get a taxi?" Then she you know arranged some money from somewhere. Say this is the money I have, so you have to you know pay all the installments for the car, and I'm not responsible for at all because I have to look after other things also. I mean, I have two brother, one brother, one sister also. They're also going to school, and uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of expenses also for the family, and uh, in that way, it's uh, slowly, slowly goes. And I work simultaneously, so. then I, so because i think why don't we i you know continue my flying and uh, get something also in that time i didn't think that it it, it i i would take it to a commercialized thing because that rarely flying happens i work just like drop the taxi for 6 7 um, days in a month and one day we just take 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 my friends to go up and then slowly slowly when i got uh, introduced with the people and they say do you have a, any i mean a tandem i say i do have but for the buying a tandem is also a nice story so so you basically you fell in love with paragliding and you want to buy a paraglider to buy a paraglider you need money to earn money you started taxi service yes i did taxi service made you introduced to many people your passengers and people around you know 50 60 km around this place and they started asking is there any way where we can also fly definitely you are right you are not right you are absolutely right so what happens because uh, from here to damshal there are so many taxi driver and uh, with the word of mouth they know this this person can also fly so because there's a lot of foreigners come and uh, there were a few people they were flying so slowly i get advertisement also for both way because if i don't have a my tender business or i can't uh, mean go for the for a flight then i work for a taxi uh, purpose so at least instead of staying uh, in a place i i was you know earning something and just like my mind was you know going really slowly slowly and slowly so passengers inspired you to take up tandem right and the tandem you realize that the money can be made from paragliding as well so slowly you got away from the uh, transport services and dedicated towards the exactly so what i did after that because i uh, took a you know, training with the mr gurpreet so he taught me really well I mean, he taught me all the things like theories nobody knows the theories at that time even we can't spell a theory and uh, he was a certified pilot from bhp certified instructor from a bhp that is british hang gliding and paragliding association so first of all i did my course like p5 ap5 that we called and uh, i did my certification from bhp also so after that i mean people make it trust on me that he is a reliable pilot and we can fly along with him so slowly slowly this get uh, I mean increased and with a couple of you know years it's really gone a lot how did you manage to buy your first tandem glider don't ask man don't ask it's a really tremendous story so you will really you know <laughs> laugh to know this so what happened in the early days it, it was on early 2000 so i bought a new car and uh, a lot of burden on my head the burden in the sense my mom say I won't pay the installment of car if you get bankrupt. So the bank will take the car, and you are the responsible for this car. And I put it a guarantee on this car, and you have to do at your own things. I had stocks. I say, okay, let's find some way, man. So I was cool paid because I working with him as a taxi driver also. I ask in a very just like you know gentle way. I say, good paid. Can I borrow you thirty thousand rupees? He say, what? Thirty thousand rupees is a big amount on that man. I said, please, please, I need. I'm going to buy a tandem paraglider, and uh, if I couldn't, you know, return you the money back, you can use my taxi services because uh, I have the surety. So even in that stage, we just like we are barely know, known each other. Like from uh, for him, I'm like a Jyoti Thakur, a small taxi driver, or and. in that stage you can't rely on the that person and the 30000 was a big amount of that but 
thank to him. I'm really thanking to him, really thankful to him that he trusted on me and I must like fulfill his trust. So, and okay, a bidirect glider, no, I don't have the harnesses. Again, I'm stuck. Then I ask uh, my first tandem uh, glider, his name is Andy, he's from England, he still comes here. And I really, you know, met him and I say, and he's surprised to see me at this stage that like, I'm running a huge tandem operation here. Like others, not huge, but tandem operation here. So then I say, can I pay you money in just like when you come visit next time? So because I don't have money. And same thing I tell him, okay, I will drop you a tax here and you can use my taxi services like this and some other money I will pay you. And then he also trusted me and I did that part. See, by, uh, you did a lot of hard work how to fly a paraglider and how to fly a passenger and you mastered how to arrange finance and then now you have skill and equipment but how did you market this how did you get people again it's a long story because what happened till 2001 to 2010 i drove taxi so most of the work i came through from the travel travel agencies and through the people I drove a lot of people like from here to Delhi and I have also conducted a lot of travel agencies there because I used to be work with them because and why because uh, from them I was a reliable person to take the people from the you know long way my driving was good my driving skills were really good so I take a lot of foreign people also like here to Bombay here to Rajasthan so I work, really I just like, work more than that so then I am getting a lot of calls from there I start selling my tender business also. While you are riding the passenger. Exactly. So, okay, sir, anybody wants to fly, please, this is my card. Even I don't have a card in that time. Sir, this is my number. So, and in that time, there was no Facebook. There was no internet. I think 1G or 2G. I, I don't think so. Uh, till 2, 2.10, we got the internet nicely here, 2010. So, it was in early, early, early ages of the internet also. Even phone were not working properly. We have like Nokia phone 3300 and we, you know, running around like, boss, ah, yes, what can we do? And we will get charged for the um, incoming calls also. It was that era. I'm just like, you are like a boss, you know, I have a phone, man, and with long antenna, you, know, you can, people are throwing this phone into the beans now. So that way I managed to, I mean, uh, start my marketing also. And uh, meanwhile, what happens, I've also started a team of a few people because uh, it's not a one-man show. If you want to come in, okay. Because never, if you ask a person, he never comes, maybe sometime. Maybe come with his fiancé, maybe with a girlfriend. Then I again start thinking, why don't we make some reliable people so that they, they cannot work for you, that you can work with them. We will work together. So I trained people from here, like I start training people, give them a proper teaching, uh, certifying from them good breath. So at least bring them to a basic and nice background. So at least because, you know, people can trust you. Because uh, this thing, because it looks very nice. In my saying, paragliding, when you fly, people look you. Ah, man, what is flying? But when you fell, your family looks after you. So that part I was really afraid of. I mean, I, I've come through this story later. I have also a, these sort of things. But again, I come through this as I came over this and again I'm flying well. I see four key factors for your paragliding life success. Number one is your mother. Number two is uh, Vijay in uh, Manali. Number three is Gurpreet in Bir, and four is taxi services. You are right. 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 Because uh, these people, this is my effort, and uh, this is their effort. They trusted me, and uh, I worked hard, and I and they bring me to this platform. Maybe Gurpreet has recognized you well in advance as an entrepreneur and then decided to support you. I don't think so because uh, still, I mean, Gurpreet say uh, you are a slow learner but you learn slow. Because he still says me, if I say you one thing, 
it takes three years to <laughs> get you back. But now you're saying it's coming right now. Yeah. Man, you are learning well now. It's not taking three years, at least you are doing something. Jyoti, you managed really well uh, with your learning skills and then uh, your finance uh, and then marketing and PR skills. Uh, I'm sure at this point of a time you must be thinking of expanding. But there is one key factor here is human resources. That is not something you can develop overnight. How did you manage that? That's, that's a difficult part actually. That is a, uh, that is a very difficult part. Because what happened, first of all, you need a reliable person. Second of all, you need a loyal person. And third, you need a strong person. Because these all three things we need in paragliding. Because what happened in the beginning days, like now, I can say, I can write on a paper, on a blank paper, out of 100 people, 80 people are gone through me. I mean, it's not me, I'm employing the whole area now. I mean, one people has worked with me, he takes my experiences, and he's working his own also. And he's also running a good company. Yeah, why not? So, why not I make employees to the, it is a self-employed thing. And we are making the employees to the village also. So, that the part I'm coming on because what happened, first of all, we make just like one or two students. Then I taught them. You, you used to train them. You take yes. reliable people who you think, you know, they are the best for you. And you take them and you uh, train from the scratch. Yes, we'll do from the bottom line. Bottom line. Then I, after that, we even uh, went to the Gurpit. And uh, he will do this all theory classes and P1, P2, P3 and P4 courses. And after that, the tandem courses, I will let them through. At least minimum 100 hours of flying. I will, they will go with each other to take a first passenger. After that, they have to pass a certify, um, certification from the Himachal Tourism. So there is a small, um, there is a committee, he sees that his takeoff landing and skills are good enough to take a people and they certify the people to take the people then along. So from, uh, you started tandem services which year? The first uh, passenger you have taken? 2000, mean 2000. 2000? Yeah. So now you have uh, how many gliders and how many pilots? I have more than 10 gliders. More than 10 gliders. So, um, was it a quick expansion? No. Slow and steady when there is. <laughs> there always. Quick thing is never good. Yeah. If you're going through the shortcuts, you're always gone. Yeah. So, be careful. There is no shortcuts in the paragliding. Yeah. Because it's a long story. One of the senior pilots, his name is Viru. Just like I'm mentioning my name, Viru, Surjit and a few other guys. They are almost working more than 12, 14 years with me. So under three or four years, they undergone to the training, solo training, then tandem training, then afterwards, no, they're working very much commercialized pilot. So I, I can trust them and I can rely. If you have a good and reliable team, then you are good. Okay, now uh, you have established the business really well, but uh, the, your initial passion, passion for flying, that is the solo flying mainly, uh, is, is something which automatically comes back obviously so I also observe in the last 3-4 months that you know you are uh, getting back to competitions and solo flying so is that that everything is set now you are at a peace of mind that you want to take up the solo back uh, for this there were two reasons so what was my biggest reason uh, I used to do the competition earlier also in 2012 we have been to Bulgaria and uh, I got hurt myself. My glider got in sp spun it, in, got in spin, I broke my back. So that was the biggest uh, drawback for me. When I, just like two, three years, I was completely on the bed and uh, I couldn't fly. But my dream is like, you know, fly, fly and fly. This is my passion. And uh, I couldn't live without the passion. Um, recently, I've done the flying in Macedonia also. I went to Macedonia and uh, that was the biggest comeback for me. And you know I have done the, this comp also. So it's not, every competition is not for the winning, it's about the participation. Right. And I participated well, and uh, I finished the goals and I'm really happy. So what else can make you happy? No money, nothing else. I mean, the things you are living for it and it makes you happy, and you are always happy. Very nice, very nice. 
so quickly uh, tell me um what is the your future plan plan what is your future plan for the next five years uh my future plans are first of all my com- company is established now so i'm opening the shares to my pilot the people are working with me i'm giving giving them 50% of share of my company and uh, i will like to fly for the competitions so you are giving shares of yes one of the 10 people they work I mean, they brought me because this is not a one man show so i'm giving them 50% of shares of my company very nice and uh, i will fly solo driver so basically you are making your long time dependent people your partner yes i do so that you know uh, that works the business works even if you take a short break and that short break you spend on the solo flight you are absolutely right you you you, you 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 nailed it you nailed it because then business they also try instead of my worker they will say the other business partner and when you are saying your partner mean you are working more well so the company's trp is again going more more and more very nice very nice excellent um jyoti bhai uh, just tell me a small message anybody who want to be a tandem entrepreneur or who want to run a paragliding business um uh, who in, in short anybody who want to be a jyoti bhai what's your tips first key word is learning learn properly go go through the proper courses and you know make harder practice that you can fly perfectly because as a tandem pilot what we are going to do another people is trusting you is trusting as you as god for the 20 minutes you are totally responsible for his life for the any casualty i mean if you not you know studied properly wind weather so i think please don't do it third thing after you okay you are going through the studies you have learned this thing why don't you do a search a nice place I mean where the wind is okay take off is okay landing is okay then start flying there that is if you need my help i will definitely in anywhere in the india i will help you with the identifying the sites or I mean flying there you are always to free me just like to call me or reach me any time third finance please look after your finances and uh, make the better I mean equipment buy a good equipment that suits you also and the last thing happiness happiness never comes with the words it will comes through your work so if you work properly and if you gone a happy passenger he will bring you more not one this this thing is word of mouth there's no media like word of mouth so it will bring you more 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 and more business thank you very much Jyoti bhai uh, thank you so much for sharing such successful story i'm sure this will help many entrepreneurs in india many youngsters to take up you as a an example and uh, start their own tandem business with your blessings and with your support thank you very much fly safe and fly high bye guys